Kevin Zies, Executive Director, ProsperityAgenda.us. Give me your thoughts. The President went um, on a little tour this week to sell his health care plan, to put some pressure on Congress. He said he wants a new system in place by the end of the year. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic leadership went even further. They said they want it as soon as possible. They want to push a plan through. Tell me what you thought about the president's plan, Kevin Aziz, and, and where we need to go. Well, first of all, I want to tell you in your personal story, I've had very similar experience. And I think you're the, that's the every American that's story. It. Mm -hmm. And I've been without insurance in my life, I've been with insurance in my life, and I'm not sure which is better. <laughs> I, 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 I hate writing that's that. That's such a good point. I hate writing that check to the insurance company. i got to tell you, it's painful. And then when you get sick, you know, uh, it is deductible that, you know, there's, you know co-pays, and you're not even sure you can afford to use your insurance. It's crazy. I like the Obama of 2003, circa 2003, better than the Obama of 2009. 2003, Obama said that he supported a single-payer system and that we needed to win back the House, the Senate, and the presidency uh, before we could have it. Well, we won back all three, and now he's no longer supporting a single payer. <laughs> and I noticed at the hearing yesterday, which has happened really almost at every hearing that's been held on single payer around the country because it's the most popular choice, the first question asked was a person saying she supports single payer. Single payer, that's right. And the reason why people support single payer, really got, I think, I think yesterday, I went down to the um, Senate hearing yesterday, the uh, Senate health hearing, because uh, we had finally, after myself and seven others got arrested, uh, uh, protesting that single pair was not on the agenda. We actually got invited to testify. So Isn't I, that something? Yeah, so <laughs> I, 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 went down, I went down yesterday with Margaret Flowers, who did a fantastic job testifying for us. And um, uh, on the, uh, at the end, near the middle of the hearing, Senator Harkin left early. And he came out, and he's the, the senator from Iowa, got a lot of common sense in him. He, said, he leans over and whispers in my ear. He says, you know, I used to sell insurance. Really? And, uh, you know, what we know is that the more pools you have, uh, the, the bigger the pool, the more efficient. The more pools you have, the less efficient. He says, right now we have 1,300 insurance pools. That's not efficient. That's very expensive. 700 would be better, but one would be the best. And if you want to have an efficient system, a single payer is the best because it can control costs, it can negotiate prices, and that doesn't limit your choices. What that limits is your choices of insurance. How are you reading my mind? I was getting ready to ask. Uh, what, it limits, what, it, what it actually expands your choices, you can then go to any doctor any hospital. You're not limited by the insurance list. And so you actually have more choice with a single payer system I wanna, than less. I want to get Kevin Frick in this and ask his opinion on the president's plan. But I want to ask you what you just about what you just said. And I want to invite our callers to call in. If you have a question about single payer, what do you think is the best process? 410-319-8888. And again, what do you need? If you if you're responsible, as many of us are, for uh, other members of your family, I look out for uh, my aunts and my uncles, and they tell me, well, how difficult these choices are. What do you need? 410-319-8880. I want to ask you about this choice, because I was I was reading um, David, uh, not David Bonner, the um, Republican leader. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Bonner. Bonner. I, w I was reading his response to the president's plan, and he specifically said, if you want to limit your options, if you want to make sure that all, really, the all the President Obama, progressives, and liberals drive you towards is this government insurance plan, then we need to really seriously talk about single payer. Why is he wrong there? Why is there a perception that when we start, when we start crafting a plan around single payer, that really it limits your option to what the government really wants you to do? Well, what, what, what he's mistaking is the option of different insurance carriers versus the option of health care. And the option of health care is one that what people really want. They want to be able to go to the doctor they like. They want to be able to go to the doctor convenient. The doctor they've heard is a good doctor. The doctor that they can relate to. You know, whatever reason. And what's great about a single payer system is, rather than having competition based on you know choices based on what the insurance company says, you got to go to this doctor. This doctor will then tell you to go to that doctor, and you got to you know get the door open to get <laughs> to that doctor. Uh, what instead you have is the doctors competing based on their quality or their services. And so you have a whole different kind of area of competition and a whole different kind of area of choice. You have more choice rather than less, really, as far as your health care goes. Kevin Frick, the president, went to Green Bay. He, he had a huge town hall meeting. A lot of heartbreaking stories in that meeting mm -hmm. um, from folks who just told you the story that I, kind of like the story I just told you. Um, they said they just don't know how they can make it, but they can't do without health care. Right. Give me your thoughts on the president's plan. And where do you, where do you envision health care in, in this country? I mean, you're um, a health care economist. Uh, uh, and so you, you may see this through a different context or a different prison. 
Sure. So actually, even to go back to your uh, your personal story, I mean, working for a large employer like Johns Hopkins, I've got decent insurance that I always have had, but even the uh, pediatrician's office has now started charging if you're going to call them in the evening. And they say, still, we want you to call us and not go to the urgent care instead. But, you know, if I've got to pay $25 because they're going to charge me for the call in the evening versus go into urgent care, which is covered, I'm going to think twice about whether I go Most to the definitely. pediatrician. And so it's interesting to see that. And, uh, you know, I think what's interesting is this question of do we need choice of a health insurance plan? And, you know, I, I agree with, with Kevin that in general people are wanting choice of their provider. They want to go get care from wherever they want to, whenever they want to. But, you know, there are economists who say, well, different people are looking for different things in an insurance plan. Why should we limit that? Well, the answer is, is it better to have choice there but not have as efficient of a pooling? Mm -hmm. Or is it better to have more pooling because we can get it, you know, we can drive it down to a single plan? And I think what worries a lot of people who don't favor single payer, although I agree that all the polls tell us that's where most, that's people, where most people are, are. Mm -hmm. uh, but what worries people who don't like single payer is that they don't necessarily think that the government is going to set up a plan that they're going to like. And so there's more, there's at least some discussion of a public option mm -hmm. versus other alternatives. And, and you know, that's, a, that's something that's being brought up more and more and, and how to make that work. Uh, and that's under current discussion as the public option even in Kennedy's plan. 4103 raises the question that always gets raised, which is both votes aren't there. It's just and, but, you know, look at history. The votes were never there for anything that matters. Uh, women are voting. The votes weren't there. They're voting now. Blacks drink from any water fountain. The votes weren't there. Gays are getting married. The votes weren't there. I mean, the votes, p political reality changes. What doesn't change is practical reality. And practical reality in this current situation is that 1,300 private plans is never going to be cost efficient. It is never going to be efficient. And the other point about this public option that I have some problems with. Uh, first off, the public option avoids dealing with the problem of inefficiency. You're still going to have those 1,300 plans. You're still going to have 31% of the cost of health care being administrative. And it's a combination of the administrative waste in the insurance industry plus the bureaucracy they create. Hospitals have more billing agents than they have nurses. They have a billing agent for every bed. Doctors are spending 20% of their overhead on, uh, on dealing with the insurance industry. You're dealing with, you yourself described how you had to call and write and all that. Businesses have to do it. Everyone's dealing with administrative nonsense over health care, which we don't need. So that problem still stays. The other two things are, first, the private insurance will cherry pick and make sure they get the low cost patients. The healthy patients don't need insurance. High profit patients. The patients who are ill, the patients who are chronically ill, who are high risk, they'll be pushed into the pub public insurance. The public insurance will have the most expensive people to deal with. And then the lobby will say, the insurance lobby will say, it's not fair, we can't compete. It's got to be a level playing field. You know, we, we can't compete with the, 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 the government funded thing. So they'll put all sorts of restrictions on the government thing to make it look like the private thing, which stinks. And so we'll have a lousy public insurance that's underfunded and has the most expensive, while the, while the for-profit people get to cherry pick the most high profit and make all the money. And then five years down the road, they say, look, the government can't run insurance. Look how lousy they did. But it's because they create a situation that ensures that. And so it doesn't work. For